Imagine being told for years that interstellar visitors are just brief streaks of light, here and gone before anyone can really look, and then watching the world's two most powerful space telescopes pivot toward one of them at the same time. That is exactly what's happening with 3I80LS, the third confirmed interstellar object to enter our solar system. It isn't just intriguing astronomers, it's forcing them to rethink what counts as normal when an object comes in from another star. 3I80LS is not bound to the Sun. Its path is hyperbolic, which means it will pass through once and never return. It's traveling fast, about 60 km per second now, accelerating to roughly 68 km per second near perihelion on October 29, 2025. After that, it will make its closest approach to Earth in December before vanishing back into deep space. In between those milestones is the golden window. A near pass by Mars and a close brush with the Sun, when its ice is warm, its coma blooms and its secrets become measurable. What makes 3I80LS so compelling is not just that it's rare, it's that it keeps breaking little rules. Early on, survey stacks from TESS, ZTF and ATLAS showed a smooth five-fold brightening, far from the Sun, where water ice should be asleep. That points to CO2 or CO activation at long range or dust physics that makes small gas flows look unexpectedly bright. Spectra added a twist. Nickel line stood out in the coma, while iron, usually nickel's constant companion, was faint or missing. In most cosmic dust, iron and nickel are forged and released together. Nickel's solo is odd. One more puzzle, the motion. When gas jets blow off a comet's surface, they act like tiny thrusters nudging the core away from a pure gravity track. That rocket effect was clear in Borisov, the last interstellar visitor with a healthy coma. With 3I80LS, the coma and tail show up in images, yet the fitted non-gravitational drift looks surprisingly small. Either vents are arranged to cancel lateral pushes as the object spins, or the thrust is being routed or absorbed in ways we don't usually see. Neither idea is impossible. Both are testable. Enter James Webb and Hubble. On July 21st, when 3I80LS was around 27 million miles from Earth, Hubble captured a ghostly teardrop coma around a tiny nucleus. Because Hubble tracked the object's motion, background stars streaked, turning what could have been blur into detail. Hubble's ultraviolet and visible eyes measured dust size distributions and the slow growth of a faint tail. Then on August 6th, JWST began its deep infrared campaign with NIRSP and MIRI aiming straight at the chemistry and heat. Webb's strengths are simple to say and hard to overstate. Infrared sensitivity, long stable stairs at L2, cryogenic instruments and coronographs to peel glare from faint signals. Early JWST spectra hint at water ice, silicates, carbon-rich dust and even complex organics, possibly frozen into this traveller for billions of years before our sun was born. If that holds, we are not just studying an object, we are reading a time capsule from another star's nursery. One claim you may have seen, water confirmed, deserves caution. The spectral hints are promising, but they live near tricky features and require careful modeling. Some researchers argue earlier analysis jumped too quickly from color and continuum shape to water present. Others counter that the absorption features are real, just faint. This tug of war is exactly how science should work in a noisy regime. Hypotheses on the table, methods challenged, repeatable tests skewed. Beyond composition, JWST data suggest a smoother day-night temperature transition than a bare rock would have, more like a thin atmosphere or a surface able to store heat. That does not make 3I80LS habitable. It does make it more interesting. A thin, transient coma can act like an atmosphere for heat transport at perihelion. Subsurface layers can also dampen temperature spikes. Infrared snapshots before and after its close pass by the sun will tell us how heat really flows. Hubble and ground observatories have spotted another oddity. Part of the dust appears oriented sunward, opposite the usual rule that radiation pressure pushes dust away from the sun. The likely explanation is large heavy grains that don't get shoved around easily, coupled with local flows inside the coma. It's still weird enough to demand targeted modeling. Interstellar visitors may carry dust with size and cohesion properties our local comets rarely show. Trajectory is the part that keeps modelers up late. Most interstellar objects dive in at steep angles, indifferent to the flat plane where the planets orbit. 3I80LS is different. Its path lies nearly in the ecliptic, tilted by only a few degrees. 
and it is lined up for sequential passes by Venus, Mars and Jupiter. The odds of a truly random interstellar object threading those needles in one tour are tiny. Is it coincidence? Gravity is allowed to look like choreography sometimes. Is it deliberate? Only data can decide. Now comes the most provocative claim, metronic gas pulses. One observing campaign reported clean repeating bursts about 17 minutes over several days, pointing in directions that gently nudge 3i80 LS into the lane where Mars will be. Comet jets usually turn on and off as sunlight sweeps across fresh ice. They are messy, not clocks. If the beat survives independent checks, it will be extremely hard to shoehorn into random cracks and stress. If it fades under scrutiny, we file it under good rumour. Either way, it's a prime target for high-cadence light curves in the next weeks. Some have jumped from odd pulses to alien thrusters. Slow down, there is a wide middle ground between ordinary comet and operated machine. Deep repeating thermal stress can open vents on a schedule as the nucleus turns. Subsurface pores can resonate like pumps. CO2 pockets can breathe under pressure cycles. All are exotic, none is impossible. The job is to measure well enough to rule them in or out. Because 3i ATLS will pass near Mars about 0.4 AU at perihelion and even closer in early October, Mars orbiters are in a rare position to help. Maven can sample plasma and fields. ExoMars TGO can sniff gases. MRO can image the coma against space with incredible precision. If any orbital instrument detects a stable pulse in the tail or a sudden change in the orbit near Mars that gravity cannot supply, those will be landmark results. If nothing out of the ordinary happens, that's a useful answer too. By late October, JWST will have before and after spectra. Perihelion is when ice's roar and faint lines pop. CO2 at 4.3 micrometer versus water bands in the near IR will tell us which volatiles are truly in charge. If nickel lines stay strong, while iron refuses to appear across different phase angles in times, that signature gets hard to dismiss as noise. If the day-night heat curve flattens into tidy plateaus, that hints at controlled or unusual heat handling. Each test tugs the story one way or the other. December 19th brings the closest Earth-side approach, probably our best window for broader telescope participation. Ground-based polarimetry can pin dust sizes. High-speed photometry can hunt for that 17-minute rhythm. Community science hubs like AAVSO, International Comet Quarterly and COBS are already asking observers for magnitude estimates, tail sketches and time-lapse sequences. If you contribute, log times, gear and location. Share raw stacks, not just pretty composites. Clean data beats hot takes every time. You're gonna hear a lot about artificial versus natural. It's okay to hold both thoughts without picking a camp today. Avi Lob has put 3i ATLS at about a 4 on his 10-point Lob scale of technological likelihood. Not ordinary, not proven. He's even floated the idea of sending a radio message that is active SETI to test the waters. That's a debate worth having in the open. Messages to known nearby objects carry different risks than beams fired at star systems thousands of light years away. A more grounded intercept idea involves using spacecraft already in the neighborhood to make the most of this pass. There has been public chatter about repurposing NASA's Juno spacecraft after it wraps its Jupiter mission in 2025. If extended into 2026, Juno could conceivably make useful observations when 3i ATLS drifts past Jupiter in March 2026. That's a planning puzzle more than a promise. Fuel, geometry and priorities matter. But it's the kind of opportunistic thinking this object deserves. Big picture, this is the third time in a decade that an object from another star has slipped through a backyard and asked us quietly to pay attention. Oumuamua bent the rules by accelerating without a visible tail. Borisov obeyed the rules perfectly. 3i ATLS could be our third teacher. Early unusual brightening, odd chemistry, coma without drift, ecliptic hugging path may be a metronome in its breadth. The only wrong move is to force a conclusion before the tests speak. Here's a simple checklist for the coming weeks. Light curve cadence. Does the 17-minute beat appear and hold through changing geometry? Spectra. 
do CO2, water, CN and C2 behave on schedule and do nickel and iron stick to their strange dance? IR heat. Do day night curves warm and cool naturally or hold neat plateaus? Ephemerides. Do orbit fits with gravity, radiation and jet thrust leave steady residuals pointing body fixed? Polarimetry. Do dust sizes explain brightness without invoking wild chemistry? And please, if you or your club chase dawn or dusk views near perihelion, review safety. Never point optics anywhere near the sun without ISO certified filters mounted over the front of the lens. If you're not absolutely sure it's safe, skip it. There will be other nights. Eyes don't get second chances. One last thought that sits outside the numbers, moments like this reshuffle our sense of scale. We are watching in real time an object older than our solar system answer the sun's heat with light and motion that we can measure. Whether 3 i ATLS is a comet built under another star or a vehicle wrapped in ice, it is a teacher. It is here once. It carries a story we do not get to hear often. If we meet it with steady hands, clear eyes and shared data, we'll write a chapter worth rereading. So yes, keep the big questions alive. Could it be technology? Could it be a natural edge case? Would we send a message? Could we catch it someday? But let the next words belong to the tests. JWST and Hubble are on it, Mars orbiters are in position, ground arrays are ready. In a few weeks, the beat will either fold or fall apart, the chemistry will either double down or soften, the orbit will either drift or stay stubborn. That is how the universe speaks, quietly, in patterns you can measure. Keep listening, keep measuring and keep a little space in your mind for the answer you didn't plan for.